Welcome to the second video in our software testing series. The last video explored static, unit, integration, and end-to-end -end tests. In this video, we will explore what is mocking, what are the core concepts behind it, when to mock and when not to mock, and what are the best practices for mocking. We won't go deep into fake data, stubs, drivers, spies, or any of that. We'll just focus on the mental model around mocking. Everything else can come later. If you're new here, I'm Lucas Paganini, and in this channel, we release web development tutorials. Consider subscribing if you're interested in that. So, what is mocking? Mocking is the process of simulating the external dependencies of the code that's being tested. Thus, isolating your code from the multitude of things it depends on. This simulation can come in two forms, either fake data or fake interactions. For example, let's say you want to test a function that requires a connection to a database. The function may depend on a database, but the database is not the focus here. The focus is the function itself. We're not testing the database or the database connection, we're just testing a function that depends on those things. Sure, by providing an actual database connection, we ensure that our test is more real, but that comes at the expense of complexity and maintainability. Instead, we could just provide a fake database to our function. That fake database is considered a mocked interaction because it mocks, which means it fakes, something that our function interacts with. We also have mocked data, which is fake data used for tests. For example, the fake database we provided was just so that we could start testing our function. Now that we have all the interactions that our function depends on, we need to actually test it. And how do we do that? By passing inputs and expecting certain outputs. To pass inputs, we need data. And this doesn't need to be actual data from your real database. We can use mocked fake data. In this example, we create a fake user called Joe with ID 1. A common concern is when to mock. After all, we could have used an actual database in our tests above. So how can we decide when we should mock? First, let's take a look at the pros and cons of mocking. We have mainly four pros. First is, there is less setup because it doesn't come with all the dependencies of an actual database. Second, there is no cleanup, because we're not actually saving anything to an actual database, so if there is no persistent state, there's nothing to clean. Third, it's faster, because again, it doesn't come with all the dependencies of an actual database. And lastly, it's isolated, because our tests will still pass even if the actual database breaks. Let's talk a little bit more about this last point. It might sound bad, or at least weird, that our test passes even though it wouldn't pass with an actual database. I was skeptical about this too. But here's the reasoning. If the database is broken, only the database tests should fail, not the tests that depend on the database. The advantage of this isolation is debugability. Imagine you have a thousand tests that depend on the database. If they're using their real database instead of a mock, all these tests will fail, leaving you with the task of figuring out why is everything crashing. But if the tests are isolated, only the database tests will fail, so you know exactly where to look. Now, the cons to mocking is there is less confidence, because you're not using real interactions our data. Confidence is the key word here. You have to consider that every time you mock something, you are creating a fake environment. So that begs the question, will it work in the real environment? That really depends on how well the test is written. But still, it's not the real environment. So a test that uses mocking can't provide the same confidence as a test that doesn't use mocking. There's no silver bullet, no magic answer you have to ponder each case individually. How much confidence are you willing to give up? To me, the answer is not. But I also don't want to give up on all the benefits of mocking. So instead of choosing between fast, mocked tests or slow, real end-to-end -end tests, I choose both. As mentioned in the previous video, 
we run all types of tests here. For immediate feedback, we run unit and integration tests on every file change. These tests must run very fast, so for them, we use mocked data and mocked interactions. Then, when we open a pull request, our continuous integration pipeline spins up a staging environment where we run our end-to-end -end tests with fake data, but no fake interactions. That combination makes me confident that my code works when all the test passes. Now, supposing that you've already decided to use mocks, here are some best practices. First, only mock types that you own. External types can change at any time, so don't mock them. Notice that we're talking about types, not actual values. You can totally mock a third-party library, just don't mock their type signature. Second, don't mock return values of what's being tested. Think about this for a second. Mocking return values of our testing subject doesn't even make sense. Imagine writing tests for a sum function and mocking it to always return three. That doesn't let us know if our function is actually working. Third, don't mock everything. This is an anti-pattern. If everything is mocked, we may test something quite different from the production environment. It's like we've talked before. The more you mock, the less confidence you have in that test. If you mock everything, then it provides no confidence that it will work in the production environment. Fourth, use integration tests. If you care about how your code interacts with other modules, you should do integration testing rather than mocking. And fifth, test failing cases. While creating your mocks, don't forget to simulate errors and test error handling. You can even add expectations that some methods or API calls should not be made in case of an error. That's all for concepts. In the next video, we'll talk more about fake data and fake interactions. If you want to dive deeper into software testing, consider subscribing to our newsletter at lucaspaganini.com. It's spam free, we keep the emails few and valuable. And if your company is looking for remote web developers, consider contacting my team and me. You can do so at lucaspaganini.com. As always, references are in the description. Like, subscribe, have a great day, and I will see you in the next one.